All right, so we're going to go ahead and print the all-in-one test again. Um, I think it's going to be fine, but since I'm still in learning mode and learning about these materials, I'm going to go ahead and print it one more time. I'm not expecting any more problems on the cracking on the front, and we've solved the problems with the uh, embossed text by changing our process settings. I'll just review those again. So again, we had some problems with layers before when we were changing uh, different materials. So these layers look good. The infill, we're going to leave at 50% because we want to make sure the make sure the thin walls are solid enough. And then on the advanced again, oh yeah, see, so this project, those, those problems have been, so good thing I checked this. So for the thin walls, we're going to uh, allow uh, single extrusion walls, and we're going to allow single extrusion fills. And then we're going to update this profile. I think if I had reloaded the profile from scratch, if I had switched to a different profile and come back, it would have remembered the profile I had set up in the last project, the, uh, the uh, thin wall uh, cracking uh, base adhesion project. But the uh, simply Simplify 3D software seems to make a copy of this profile into the factory file for this project. So if you update your uh, material profiles in the background, you need to reload them when you bring up uh, your existing project. So now these all look good now. They're still connected to the printer. We can double check that. So we're still connected, so that's good. And then we can go to prepare to print. And we can verify before we go that yes, indeed, the uh, uh, embossed text is going to come out uh, properly. So, so let's go ahead and start this. We'll just uh, begin printing. And this is going to take, oh, there's other, other information I want to go over up here on the left. Because you have some build statistics. So it tells you about how long it's going to take. This is a little underestimated from my experience, but it doesn't include the heating up time of the printer. So that's about maybe 10 minutes, depending on what temperatures you're going at. And uh, it's nice to have the filament length required and the material cost. So once I start producing uh, things for sale, it'd be nice to know what my costs are. It's going to cost two dollars and fourteen cents. I'm not sure that's correct, but I didn't. I have to go back and re-enter. I don't really know the values of these spools because they came with the printer. So when I start using uh, filaments that I bought, I'll be updating these parameters to get a more accurate, uh, more accurate cost. Okay, so now we're going to start printing, and then away it goes. So it's still heating up, but you can see that the Simplify 3D software has already sent over the first uh, amount of printing. You can see there's quite a bit of what's going to happen on this test uh, already outlined with this information that's sent over already. So that's nice. You can get an idea of what, what's going to be done behind the, the curved wall in front, which is harder to see later. So. You can see it's starting to lay the base down. It did the outline perimeter. Now it's laying down the first layer along the base. So everything looks good. Good adhesion. So this should be a good print. Well, that print was a fail. We only printed part of the base and then it uh, said it was done. So that was confusing about why it sent, I thought it sent so much data to the printer at the beginning that doesn't usually happen it takes a long time to get the base out and it just puts it out layer by layer but it had you know 50 layers in there so obviously there was some kind of communication communication glitch between the printer and the computer so our new procedure will be after every print shut down the printer shut down the computer or at least shut down simply simplify 3d and restart it so that's what we're going to do for this print so we sent the printer to home and now we're going to have to manually Manually lower the uh, print bed so we can get the failed print off there. The base looks good. I mean, it printed fine, but that's all it printed. It didn't print the rest of the all-in-one test, so that was a fail. It's the first time that's happened. So, as soon as a glitch in the software. All right, so we're ready to try that print again. We've got the printer started. We need to connect to the printer. 
my little trick this devices disappears we click it again and then we quickly click, click connect and it should be able to connect this time All right, it's all connected. We minimize this. We do a pair to print. And our, all of our details look good. So we just need to begin printing over USB. So hopefully this time it will uh, print successfully. Last time it only printed the first layer and part of the second layer. So. I'm hoping this time it's going to work better. That'll be our, again our new procedure is to shut down simplify after each print, shut down Simplify 3D, shut down the printer, and restart them so that there's no confusion between the two between the two uh, devices. All right, it looks like this print is going properly. So it's only it's 16 minutes into the print after heating. And it's just doing the base and simplify 3D is only sent over just the base command. So this this looks more like I've seen before. So this this this, this one should work. All right, we're 66% done. We're two hours and 43 minutes into the build, into the print, and everything looks pretty good. I can see the embossed text. The bridging test seems to be working. There's a few strings on it, but. Uh, Nothing too bad, I think, for this. Everything looks great. The adhesion looks good. No cracking, so looking good. On to the finish. All right, it's just finishing the overhangs. And it's 92% done, so. Three hours and 47 minutes into the build, so that's about what Simplify 3D predicted. So it's gonna be pretty close, a little bit, maybe 10 minutes over. Over here on the Simplify 3D side, you can see that it's sent over, it's finished the shorter uh, overhang, and it's just finishing up this taller one. Everything else below that is printed. All right, that's all finished. We're going to open the door. We'll look in there. And we're gonna let it cool down completely before we uh, Let's just raise it up a little bit. Everything looks really good. Towers and back are all in place. So we'll take it out after it cools off and finish up this build. Alright, the model's completely cooled down. In fact, it's cooled down overnight. So it actually, it's a cool down overnight. It, it, <coughs> I think it's going to be much easier to get off. It's about uh, 60 degrees here in the garage. So. I don't have any problems with the platform. All right, let's take a look at this thing. All right, all the overhangs have some blobbing on the bottom. It's a little bit of blobbing on the bottom here, but that's the same as the... Uh, PLA. All the printing came out great. Uh, the bridging, some stringing hanging below the bridging, but I'm not that worried about that. I'm not going to be printing stuff like that. So, all the holes and the cylinders look really clean. The towers got printed. This tower, yeah, I mean, they're, they're very thin, so. ABS is probably not the best choice for printing little thin cylinders like that. But the bigger cylinders printed fine, so I would say we're good to go, and the bottom is completely clean. Look at that. We're good to go on settings for this PLA. So now we're going to do something real that we could actually is actually useful instead of all these test programs. So here's, a, here's a quick preview of our next project. We're going to do something for real instead of <clears throat> just a test project. So th this is the size of the half kilogram uh, 
filament reels that came with the printer. The other one, the uh, ABS one is in the machine right now. And he, he, these are an example of a one kilogram reel. You see it's quite a bit bigger. It will fit inside of here, supposedly. If you if you print an adapter that will fit inside this uh, larger uh, axle area. And it does fit in there. I'll try it on the other side so it's not enough for my right. So it will actually fit in here if you have the right little adapter. And so that's what we're going to be working on next. So there's more room on this side. It doesn't have the uh, stepper motors like it does on this side. So there should be enough room in there. And that's our next project.